Prime Time. Now from New York, Diane Sawyer. Good evening. Chrysler's Jeep Cherokee is one of the hottest selling vehicles around. In fact, back in the 1980s, it helped start the whole sports utility vehicle craze. But tonight, there are some very serious questions being raised about a potential problem in all Cherokee and Grand Cherokee models built before 1996. Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace has the results of a primetime investigation. Chris? Diane, there are now more than two and a half million Cherokees on the road, but you don't have to own one to be at risk. That's because across the country, Cherokees have been taking off on drivers, racing into traffic or even into crowds of people. Tonight, some new information about why it's happening. It looked like there was something wrong with the car. A Grand Cherokee slams into a crowded Los Angeles bus stop on Valentine's Day. Four people are injured. One man is killed. It, we think, accidentally accelerated, stuck open. In Des Moines, a Jiffy Lube mechanic loses control of a Cherokee and crashes into traffic. A three-year-old in another car is killed. The problem is sudden acceleration. In hundreds of cases, people shifted from park to drive or reverse, and Cherokees bolted at high speed. You may not have heard of this, but people who deal with cars for a living know all about it, like car wash operator Walter Tack. When you're going that fast in such a short distance, you have very little time to think about it. The car wash industry issued a special alert after 120 accidents with runaway Cherokees. Car wash attendants now take special precautions. With one hand on the ignition switch, we put it into gear. It's an awkward position, but it does work. The consumers tell us the car just took off like a rocket. It was roaring. I couldn't stop it. Consumer advocate Clarence Ditlow of the Center for Auto Safety wants Chrysler to recall the Cherokee. All told, there have been five deaths, and the government says it has 500 cases so far. The Jeep Cherokee is the number one vehicle for sudden acceleration in America. The mystery is why Cherokees are taking off on their drivers. It's a question that has troubled government and safety experts for years. But now, a primetime investigation has come up with the best answer so far as to what's causing these tragedies. Bobby Long was in his Grand Cherokee at a crowded Delaware mall when he slipped it into gear. The car had a loud roar, automatically took off by itself. Tried to break it, it didn't do anything. The Cherokee kept accelerating to almost 40 miles an hour as it raced through the parking lot. What was going through your mind? Trying to control and stop from killing people is what was in my mind. And I heard loud squealing of wheels. Ann Garcia was walking through the lot and Long couldn't avoid her. As quickly as I turned around, I had been hit. The impact broke her neck and tossed her 100 feet. Your body actually went up in the air and landed down under another car. Another woman is still recovering after being crushed between Long's Cherokee and the car that finally stopped it. I thought I killed two people. Is there something about the Cherokee that's causing all these incidents? No, there's nothing wrong with the vehicle. The vehicles are very safe. Sue Siski is head of safety at Chrysler. She says none of the accidents investigated so far has turned up any defect in the brakes, engine, or anything else. Instead, she blames it on something Chrysler calls pedal misapplication. What do you mean, pedal misapplication? The driver is confused, thinks they have their foot on the brake, and probably has their foot on the accelerator. The company produced this video to prove its point. They hit the gas on a Grand Cherokee, then applied the brakes. Even with the accelerator still floored, the vehicle stopped. Simply put, brakes always win. So all of these incidents, it's the driver's fault? While they believe they have their foot on the appropriate pedal, it's, it's an error. They do not. To this day, as we sit here right now, you're absolutely certain you had your foot on the brake. Yes, I am. Ellen Boland doesn't buy any of this talk about driver error. Like a lot of people involved in these accidents, she had owned her Grand Cherokee only a few days when she tried to move it in her garage. And the vehicle just took off. I had both feet on the brake. It would not stop starts climbing up on the garden tractor, pushing it into the wall. It climbed up these steps. The Jeep is actually the going Jeep up the steps? The Jeep actually climbed up these steps, got to here, and broke through the wall. 
broke right through into your family room? Yes, there? it did. And my husband was standing right here. Which brings us to the next part of the Cherokee mystery. If it is just a matter of people hitting the gas instead of the brake, why are they doing it so much more often in the Cherokee? This man thinks he knows why. Safety expert Bob Kunitz often testifies as a witness in court for accident victims. Chrysler says this is driver error. It is, but it's design-induced driver error. The design of the vehicle causes that error to occur. We hired a member of the Society for Automotive Engineers to measure the design of the pedals on the Cherokee and several other vehicles. 0.34. The Ford Taurus is typical. Most people use the steering wheel to center themselves in the driver's seat. Look how the brake on the Taurus extends almost four inches to the right of the center of the steering wheel, within easy reach of the right foot. Now, look at this 1991 Cherokee. Because of the big transmission hump, Chrysler had to move the Cherokee's pedals to the left. The brake extends only a third of an inch over the center line. Most cars, if you put your right foot down, a little to the right of the center of the steering wheel, you're going to get the brake pedal, but not on the Cherokee. On the Cherokee, what do you get if you put your foot in that place? You get either air or you get the accelerator pedal. And if you get the accelerator pedal, you get trouble. We also measured the Cherokee's chief competitor, the Ford Explorer. Again, the Cherokee pedals are to the left. Okay. Kunitz had me get into a Grand Cherokee to see what he was talking about. It was my first time inside one. Uh, put your foot on the brake. All right. well, that is a little bit off to the left there. It's it? very much off to the left. And I think back to where you usually go to brake. It would be right on the... You're right on the edge. Right on the right edge of that brake. Now, suppose you just missed by a little bit. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, oh, there you go. Your foot's down yeah. and you're hitting the accelerator yeah. pedal. Yeah. If you still have doubts that something as simple as where the pedals are located can be causing such a deadly problem with sudden acceleration, consider the worst case the car industry has ever seen. The case of the Audi 5000. Back in the 80s, it was a big seller with a big problem. The government documented more than 2,000 accidents, six of them fatal, involving Audi 5000s, which suddenly took off on their drivers. 60 Minutes did a report that almost put Audi out of business in North America. The broadcast seemed to dismiss Audi's view. The drivers were just hitting the wrong pedal. Maybe you ought to have a special course to teach these articulate, well-educated people who buy the Audis the difference between the gas and the brake? No. 60 Minutes quoted experts who offered theories that blame the car's computer or transmission. Again, watch the pedal go down by itself. 60 Minutes had it wrong. Simple as that. Yes. Mike Brownlee should know. He was in charge of the office of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration that investigated the Audi 5000. The final report said the major cause appears to be pedal misapplication, which appears to have been increased by the location and possibly the feel of the control pedals. 60 Minutes has since clarified its report. Brownlee, who retired two months ago, says the Cherokee cases in the 90s sound just like the Audi cases in the 80s. When you say it's the pedals, they had their foot on the wrong pedals, how certain are you? Quite certain. Uh, virtually completely certain. To check out the comparison, we also measured the Audi 5000. Guess what? Its pedals line up almost identically with the pedals on the 91 Cherokee. Chrysler insists the Cherokee has no design problem. But when we showed their safety chief, Sue Siski, our measurements, she began to back off. Does the placement of the pedals to the left in the Cherokee have an impact on safety? Well, we don't believe that there's any conclusive uh, evidence in terms of where pedal position would affect that. We do know that we have a higher occurrence on our Cherokee and Grand Cherokee. Could the reason you're having the higher occurrence be because the pedals are to the left? That could be a factor. It could be a factor. It could be a factor. It was a startling admission, one the car wash industry says it heard privately from Chrysler more than a year ago. That they have moved the pedals slightly to the left, and by doing that, they say that that gives, especially a person that's inexperienced driving a Jeep, uh, the likelihood of perhaps stepping on the wrong pedal. Chrysler denies telling the car washers any such thing. But starting with the 96 Cherokee, the company installed a safety feature called a shift lock. It prevents a driver from shifting from park into gear unless his foot is on the brake. Audi offered the same device for all 5,000s, new and old, back in 1987. Complaints dried up 
as they have with the new Cherokees. But unlike Audi, Chrysler did not install the shift lock in its two million older models. Safety advocate Clarence Ditlow says the company wanted to save the $100 it costs to retrofit each vehicle. That's the message that Chrysler is sending to consumers. We don't care enough about your life to spend $100 a vehicle to prevent an accident. As recently as three weeks ago, Chrysler told us flatly they had no intention of retrofitting the older Cherokees with a shift lock. A spokesman said there was no problem with a vehicle, and the company had better ways to spend its money on safety. It was a policy Chrysler held to for more than two years. But then, last week, the company had a change of mind. We'll be uh, installing at no cost to the owner a uh, brake park shift interlock which will deter any pedal misapplication or driver's errors. After waiting two years, Chrysler is finally offering a shift lock to all Cherokee owners. They announced this sudden and complete reversal of policy, just as our investigation was concluded. Forgive me for being a little skeptical. You knew a lot of this stuff for the last two years. Is it just a coincidence that you decided to announce this decision the day before we came here to interview you? I don't think you'd say that it was a coincidence. Did the policy change because you knew we were investigating it? Well, if it did, then it was a good thing for the customer. But Chrysler's delay may have had a cost. During those two years when they did not put the shift lock in the older models, the accidents continued. Just seven weeks ago in Chicago, a Grand Cherokee driven by a parking lot attendant took off, killing a doctor standing outside a hospital. Does Chrysler bear responsibility for these accidents? There is nothing wrong with the vehicle. So no responsibility? There is no defect in the vehicle. Chrysler says it won't have the parts to retrofit the older Cherokees until August. And when they notify drivers, it won't be a recall, but rather what's called a voluntary service campaign. That means it will be up to you to bring your vehicle in to be modified. In the meantime, if you get behind the wheel of a Cherokee, make sure that when you go to step on the brake, you know exactly where it is. We'll be right back.